Welcome to ZCast, everyone. I'm ZS Caraval from ZK Research, and I'm here at HP Discover in Las Vegas. I'm with Jake Marshak, Associate CTO for Inova Healthcare. Yeah, thanks for uh, making the time to uh, to talk to us. We're uh, having a lot of fun out here in uh, in uh, Vegas with fun. Discovery. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. Learn, learning uh, learning about where all this stuff's headed. Yeah, Jake, uh, I've known you for a long time, but uh, first time on with me. So uh, just a quick intro to yourself and what you do with Inova. Sure. Uh, and who Inova is. Too. Yeah, uh, Nova Healthcare, we're the regional hospital system uh, in Northern Virginia, right outside Washington, D.C., five hospitals. Uh, we won uh, Healthcare System of the Year from Press Ganey this year, which is a huge honor to everything that we do because that's a very patient-focused um, uh, award, meaning it, it's, uh, it, it's based on feedback from the folks that we give care to. Uh, in, in, I've been there 10 years and uh, my focus is infrastructure. So I take care of network, network security, compute, storage, data center, um, and all the things that attach to it. So when I, when I meet our clinical teams, and they yeah. go, well, what do you do in IT? I say, I'm the digital plumber. I do a lot of things that hide in the basement and the walls and the closets and keep the place running. So. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, you call it plumbing, but it's it's, uh, it's very noticeable plumbing today, <laughs> right? And I wanted yep. to, to start on that topic, right? You. You and I have known each other a long time, back to the days where nobody thought about the network. Yeah. And uh, I ran a survey last year and I asked uh, 600 respondents their opinion of the network for business operations compared to two years ago, and over 90% said it was more important. It's no surprise. 80% 80 though also said it was more complex. And I'm curious, um, how has the role of the network changed? And I'm, what it really fascinates me is the 10 years you've been in the healthcare institution, how has What's the network doing today that you know no one thought it would do a decade ago? Oh wow, yeah, that, there, there's a lot to unpack in, in yeah. that in that story. Um, everything's connected, uh, you know. And, and when we think about AI, when we think about data analytics, think about everything. It's about taking all of the things that happen in the healthcare world and getting it to where it can be useful, right? That could be as simple as the EMR of standing at a keyboard typing and, and consuming things off the screen. To nowadays ambient AI and, and things that are happening in the environment that can help determine healthcare outcomes. So data is important and the network is the path that gets data from point A to B. Um, in, the, in 10 years, you're absolutely right, it's grown from being a convenience of being able to plug in a PC or you know a printer to instrumental to delivering healthcare. When, when we uh, think about the network as an enabler, it's it's a very interesting conversation because now you're talking about devices and sensors and IoT, medical IoT, and you know the ability to keep anything connected anytime um, is is how healthcare runs, right? We don't use paper anymore. We right, don't use yeah. film like like an X-ray. You know, used to be they hung it on the wall and on a light board. That's all digital now, right? And it, it traverses the network. So we've had some really interesting stories in the last ten years. I was sharing one yesterday about our high reliability operations center. So we took functions that used to live in the hospital because they were local and you and then they wanted to be local like uh cardiac monitoring uh telesitting so watching patients um you know and we centralized it and that was one of our you know initiatives after covid was how do we start scaling as a health system to get better uses out of our resources if the network wasn't performing well there's no way you would take 400 cardiac monitoring patients right and put the people that are responding to their care in another building. And so the criticality of the network, the reliability, the network security, of the network are all paramount to that story being successful. And we've grown that high reliability uh, operations center from six functions now over a dozen. And that, you know, that's the testament to the network being successful. Um, you know, when I think about it from an individual patient room perspective, you used to maybe have a couple devices in the room, a patient monitor, a computer. Yeah. Now that the whiteboard, cow, yeah, the, it, the, yeah, yeah. the cow or the wow. <laughs> yeah. Now that whiteboard that, you know, they used to write, you know, with a, with a, with a Sharpie or a, a, a dry erase marker on, that's digital, right? We have telemedicine in, you know, 20% of our rooms now. Yeah. We want to get to 100% so that we have a built-in telemedicine capability, um, sensors, um, even the light shades and the lights in the room need to be connected for patient experience. Yeah. And the network's got to work. I, I was yeah. talking with a couple of years ago with somebody from one of the Boston hospitals where they tried to connect a lot of the patient telemetry, the handheld devices, and there was so much latency built in. One of the nurses, in fact, told me she was standing patient bed bedside, an alarm went off, and it took like almost a minute to get the alerts. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, now the clinicians no longer trust 
the devices, right? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, this is really a world where seconds count. Yeah. So I totally, you know, the, no, the literally the network saves, saves lives are caught, right? So I don't want to, yeah. you know, well, and, and overemphasize your role. But no, it really no, not. Is a, <laughs> well, and, and one of the ways that, that technology overall, obviously network driven, is going to save lives is with our staffing shortages. Right, that that we we struggle with getting enough caregivers, and the curves of more patients, more visits, right? Because the population's aging, they're living longer, all those things. With the number of doctors and nurses that are retiring or leaving the profession, technology mm. is going to help solve that problem. So that nurse who waited a minute for for an alarm, that was a minute she could have spent with yeah. another patient. So. As we try to figure out how to automate things, bring data together, bring workflows uh, to you know to, to more efficiency, every minute that I save a clinician is a minute they give back to bedside care. So that's fascinating because we hear all about AI taking jobs, <laughs> but in this case, it's filling jobs that you don't have enough people for. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. and and you know AI in in the healthcare workflows to me really hits two big areas one one is efficiency yeah. right so can you take a task that used to be manual or used to take time and now have AI do some or all of that task the other one is in changing clinical outcomes right we have petabytes of data and there are so many clinical outcomes hidden in that data that if we can use AI to bring forward to a physician to to a caregiver something of relevance um, it could be behavioral, it could be yeah. uh, you know, from imaging data, and now all of a sudden you have a situation where a patient who wasn't going to have an, a, a positive outcome, AI helped the physician have them you know, prevent an error or, or you know, move them forward in their care path. That's super exciting, right? I mean, yeah. that, that's, that's life-changing um, technology. And, and we're starting to see it. I mean, we... Um, well, the promise yeah. of AI is to solve some of the world's biggest problems. <laughs> and I think in yeah. nowhere in healthcare is that more, uh, yeah. you know, uh, more acute. And, uh, and I'm curious, you know, we were both in the uh, networking session here, and they talk a lot about security. And security historically has been something that has been a separate discipline from networking. <laughs> in fact, I think I wrote my first report on security and networking coming together 20 years ago. Right, yep. and so you know, as a, somebody who's supposed to predict trends, I'm, you know, maybe it was a little <laughs> early. But are you seeing more of that now? Yeah. Oh, uh, um, absolutely. And and you know, I I feel very honored to be at Anova because we've been taking security very seriously for a very long to. time. Yeah, and yeah. and just you know, seeing what's happening in the healthcare industry with ransomware events and breaches and all those kind of things, like it. When you shut a hospital down because they've had a ransomware event and you're rerouting ambulances and moving patients out, you know that changes someone's life. And so, so for us, cybersecurity, yeah, there's dollars and cents to it, but it's 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 about the care we have to give to the community. That if, if we have to shut things down, it's it's not a good day. So, watching the evolution, and that would be unpopular. Yeah, yeah and <laughs> you know, and, and partnering with HBE Aruba on our connectivity and seeing how seriously they take technology, um, security technologies as a fundamental part of the network. Um, we're now in kind of our second generation with them. Uh, we started off with segmentation and Mac and kind of you know very uh, basic zero trust uh, principles. And we're starting a journey with uh, Edge Connect for SD-WAN, so now we can have just secure decision making um, you know, as we route traffic uh, and uh, dynamic segmentation, so taking ClearPass and NAC to the next level where we're putting policy on devices as they're admitted to the network at the switch port level yeah. um, or the Wi-Fi roll level. And, you know, essentially, uh, when people ask me, what is that really going to mean? I said, you know, I'm, I'm very excited for the day where I'm going to be running a 160,000 port firewall, right? Because every switch port right, to me right, becomes yeah. a firewall policy object. And that's a game changer when you're talking about medical IoT that is probably some of the worst security situations yes. that you'll see. Or you a got, lot of old devices are still yeah. running Windows 95. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. It, like, it, it, is, it is super challenging. Uh, you know, when you think about you know an MRI or a CAT scan costs millions yeah. of dollars. Yeah. So of course we're gonna run that for 10 or 15 years and the Linux box that's sitting there driving it you know, is is going to be a challenge security-wise, and so um, we had 125,000 devices on our network. Uh, I can put agents on maybe a quarter of them. 
So if I don't bake security into the network, I'm never going to solve security problems, right? And again, I think a lot of yes. folks love the crowd strikes and the defenders and you know those kinds of things that are amazing pieces of technology on the endpoints that you can put them on. But two, you know, three quarters of my endpoints, I can't do that. Yeah, yeah. So if I can't bake three security quarters. into the network, yeah, yeah exactly. Wow. Yeah, that thirty thousand out of one hundred and twenty-five yeah. thousand that I can put agents on. So if I can't bake the security into the network, I'm never going to get where I need to go to secure that traffic. Um, you know, and then again, you throw the AI workloads on top of it yes. of all the things that are going to happen there. No, that almost yeah. has to be. In yeah, it. yeah. How, how are you finding the relationship with with H, with Aruba HP? You know, it's uh, when I think of you, you'd be a classic uh, airhead, right? <laughs> and uh, in fact, yeah. that got a lot of applause on the stage. And yeah. uh, but the company's done a nice job of integrating. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but yeah. it seems to me that HPE as a company has oriented a lot of itself around the network now, and it's not a separate organization like it used to be. And how are you finding the relationship? Um. We, you know, we've been a customer now for about six years. Um, we started with Wi-Fi late 2019, right before COVID. Yeah, which has always uh, been their sweet spot. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly. And they, they solved a huge problem for us in the wireless space. And that was, um, you know, a little bit scary to jump away from big brands that everybody was comfortable with. And, you know, it, it, you've known for a long time, but we, we took that leap of faith to solve very specific problems. And what, what surprised me about HPE Aruba is their ability to consistently deliver on what they commit to. You know, uh, coming to uh, um, Atmosphere three years ago and Discover last year and, and you know, watching over the course of the 12 months between conferences that these things actually pop up in Central. Yeah. Where they go, yeah, we're working on this and then boom, there's a panel there. So we're seeing constant com uh, delivery on commitments, uh, which is great. Um, which is a customer's goal, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and, the people of HPE Aruba are unlike any other that I see from OEM partners. Um, and they're in my office every week, working with my team, um, you know, solving problems, moving us forward. Uh, they're deeply committed to um, making sure that we're a happy customer. And you know, the amount of growth that we've done with them in the last five years is really a testament to those people. Um, being able to deliver technology solutions to us that are relevant, reliable, secure. Um, we're now starting a compute conversation with them um, because you know, again, yeah. we're, we're thinking about the future of AI and yeah. you know, the things that we heard from uh, Antonio in the, in the keynote yesterday, they resonate with us of AI at the edge you know that that's driven by high-powered networking and and you know is ready for use cases we haven't even imagined. I mean, watching that robot push a wheelchair. Yeah. You know, in in the in the keynote yesterday. Um, that was, was a, that was a tear jerker. Use it was, case. It was, was, it was yeah. a little scary, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, but at the same time, you know what? To me, if that puts a nurse back at the bedside because an AI-powered robot is yeah. going to you know help push the wheelchair to get them to where they need to go, you know, again, that that to me is is the future of technology and healthcare is, you know, the, the use cases we haven't even thought of yet. Yeah. And and so that that's exciting and it's a little scary, but it, yeah. it's exciting. All right, so you talked about how AI is going to change healthcare. How do you see AI change in network operations? They just did a really interesting demo on their Agentic yeah. agents. Are, are you excited about that? A little nervous? Uh, both, yeah. uh, you know. Um, uh, you know, we're not going to be uh, we're not going to be the first to adopt things like that, right? Um, uh, you know, we talked to David Hughes a little bit one on one yesterday too, so I, I had a little preview of, of yeah. what we heard, which was uh, giving me some time to think about it. What I really, really think HP Aruba has done differently in this space is they're not just popping, "Hey, we have this problem, press this button to solve it," or "Hey, we have this problem, we're going to solve it for you." It's giving you the context. It's giving you the data and the you know the visualizations of what did the AI do in the background that got them to this suggestion, right? And so it's not a blind trust uh, of an agent to go solve a problem. It's it's saving us the time to put together that analysis, that data digging, that diagram, that whatever's going to help us make a better decision to fix the network um, is laid out in front of you in that UI. And I, again, I think that's a differentiator. Yeah. Um, and it's going to make us very comfortable with turning that technology on because we still feel like there's a human decision maker 
that's being driven by AI prompts and AI um, fueled UIs that turn a two day problem into a five minute you know decision. Yeah. And that, like I said, you, you know, we need to move on to bigger and better things. I want my team out innovating. I want them out, you yeah. know, continuing not, to build not and expand. Log files. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Not 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 being pulled into every troubleshooting yeah. call. Yeah. Uh, all right, Jake. So we've got AI transforming healthcare, but also transforming the network underneath yeah. it that operates it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And and like I said, you know, uh, watching HPE uh, Aruba deliver on these yeah. things. You know that that's that's the the fun part. I mean, you know, yeah. the, 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 this is no longer vaporware. Like these are things that yeah. we can touch now. Well, if you think innovation's been fast up to date, <laughs> just wait. Till these vendors start using AI to, to advance our products, right? So Absolutely. I'm expecting a not, lot of it. Yeah. Now not, if they can just get us to happy hour faster. Yeah. Then, then we'll, <laughs> well call it a, 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 yeah. a super yeah, big or win. The Kenny Chesney concert. <laughs> like, yeah, so. Did you go to that? Did you oh, we did. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, the sphere is. Yeah. It, it's funny because the sphere is this very, you know. Uh, uh, experience that is is you're surrounded by an experience yes. right you know you're not it's not the stages here and you are here it's you're in the you experience are in it, yeah. yeah and so uh, i always say there's kind of this like like 50 percent technology nerdy reaction to this huge screen and all the graphics and the yeah, you're almost and spending as much time yeah. enjoying that as you are the music exactly right? yeah. yeah and, and it, i don't say the music becomes secondary yeah. but it but it becomes an equal to the experience and that's just super rare, and yeah. and I appreciate you know being able to come out here and and share that with my team, and yeah. you know let them kind of experience uh, you know the 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 power of ex imagine the network that sits behind that. No, sphere. no kidding. Yeah, I mean yeah. the amount of data flying <laughs> yeah. around yeah. on that screen has got to be crazy. Yeah. So yeah, in fact, those watching when they put up, they had the screen of the wall of TVs, but they were able to insert the images from the screen or from the stage into, into those the, screens and real. then put them in motion. Yeah. Right? You think about how difficult that wow. is, Wow, right? yeah, the processing and the, yeah, and the yeah, network yeah. has got to so, be crazy. Yeah, it's so smooth. All right, anything else you want to add? No, as I said, just, um, you know, been very exciting being, um, you know, a technologist working in healthcare. Yeah. Um, and, you know, watching, you know, living in the community and, yeah. you know, and, and, and watching Anova evolve as an organization and putting technology, our CEO now has technology in his in his strategic roadmap. That's great. Right? And, and he puts yeah. it right there on the front page and, and knowing that uh, for us to be the best healthcare uh, delivery organization, we are going to have to be one of the best technology organizations and we need the right partners and we love sharing our story. Yeah. So, you know, like uh, coming out here and talking to, to other customers and uh, it, it, it's it's definitely been one of those moments where you, you realize you're in the right place at the right time doing some of the very right things for the right folks. Well, I appreciate you sharing your story with my audience, but also thanks for all the work you do in the healthcare industry. It's certainly, you know, with an aging population, it becomes awesome. increasingly more important. So. <laughs> we'll all be there one yeah, day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess so. So I'm behalf of Jake Marshak from Inova Healthcare. I'm Zias Caravalla from ZK Research, and thanks for watching. Uh, give us a like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time in the next episode of Zcast. Thanks, Jake. Thanks.